No. Hello. 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 Here we are with our regular Friday. We've got a TV series. We've got our, we've created our own TV series, Gary. Exactly. I was waiting for yes. TV well, to pick us up. <laughs> so the first thing is the most important thing is oh we are live. Look, I can see it on my phone. Excellent. Um, so the most important thing is first of all, yes, we have the tea in place. Actually, I have a little latte again this week. What are you drinking this week, lovely Gary? builder's tea again for me i'm afraid it's always this is what i always usually have first thing in the morning i do like lattes but sometimes they're just a little bit too milky for me first thing i need to i need the boost of a strong cup of tea to get started <laughs> well i have got my lovely coffee to get me started and i've been a bit naughty today gary a bit, bit naughty oh oh i might have to oh. have a snack i know biscuits as well I might have to have a snack. Anyway, so hello, lovely YouTubey people. YouTubey people. Um, if you are joining us live, please do comment. Apparently, you have to have a Gmail account to be able to comment on YouTube. I did not know this. Um, no. So uh, quickly sign up. Um, but uh, if you are a regular commentator, commenter, uh, we'd love to hear from you during the chat because, of course, lovely Gary and I here now. Uh, the idea of this chat is to have a little bit of mindfulness, which I'm going to give uh, Gary a little... Um, a quote in a few seconds, a little challenge. He never knows what I'm going to give to him. No. And then he is going to give me a challenge, which of course is the sewing part. It's not always going to be sewing on these weekly series. Sometimes it will be drawing, sometimes it will be other crafty things. But today we're going to be talking about fabrics. And I have to say, I got my envelope in the post and I haven't opened it. I it was instructed on the back there, do not open until Friday and in there are some lovely fabrics uh, and we're going to be talking about how to uh, discern which fabrics are which, um, how to uh, tell your silks from your satins etc and that's going to be really interesting because of course that's the first place to start isn't it if you are uh, a sewing person you need to know what your fabrics are so that's what's going to be happening in this chat it's going to be about half an hour so I do hope that you could join us watch us join in um, and of course if you're watching after the live leave any comments and if you have any questions, we'll answer them for you as well. So uh, please do join in with us. So lovely Gary, um, should we begin with a little bit of uh, the little bit of mindfulness at the top? The, the thought okay. for the day, we call okay. it the thought for the day. So I came across a great comment. It was from the late great, in my opinion, Wayne Dyer, who, of course, was a man written lots of books about spirituality and um talks about the ego. And when I first heard about the ego, I thought that meant, you know, that you stand in front of a mirror for ages, sort of putting your lipstick. And it's not about that. It's that our egos keep us safe and want to keep us within our structures. And then our higher selves, if we're getting into all that stuff, kind of goes, no, we need to be free. We need to fly. We need to do new things, new things. So it's the battle of the two parts of our brains, basically. But he said, um, going off topic a little bit, but he said, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And as always with these comments that I give you, at first glance, you can go, oh, that's easy. And then when you start to delve into them, you go, let's think about that. So what's your take on that, first of all, lovely Gary? Yeah, I think, yes. <laughs> what the, Do I do that? Do I naturally do that? Or have I begun to do that? Um, yeah, I mean... I look at, I, I, funny enough, I was only thinking today about, you know, um, how for me, you know, like workshops and things changed, have changed over these last couple of years, as in what I deliver and um, how many people I see at a time and the positives and negatives. And I started going down the sort of like a, oh, it's not the same route. And I was thinking, you know, like you do. Yeah. And like, oh, I want, you know, I want to have those classes where I have loads of people in my class, like physical classes. And it, it's, you know, it's not the same. But I thought, hang on a minute, but it's different. It's just different. You can't compare. So there's no point in like looking and comparing to what we had maybe two years ago to what we've got now. It's just different. And actually, there's some really, really great things that I do now in my workshops and, and um, my teaching. You know, OK, before my teaching was very in a physical realm and it was you know, as I said, people in classes, people I directly could see, I could see what they were doing um, and I could go over and speak to them individually. So now when I do maybe especially like classes through now, like Zoom, it's not like that. It's it's just different. But 
the amount of people I can get to is a much wider audience. It's not like physically I've got to drive there or get there to see them. They come to me. So I'm sat here, you can see I'm in my studio. And um, that, so you're coming into my world, rather than me going into either a, a village hall, a, a class somewhere, you know, an institution somewhere and teaching, you come to me. So it's just different. And actually, when you look at it, it's a much more positive thing for me in a way. So it's about moving on. It's about moving on to what, where we are now and not looking back. So I don't know if that, is that really, is that answered? The quote, that yes, really... I think so. I think so because it is all about uh, changing your perspective. I mean, of course, as yeah. I say, he writes about spirituality and it, and and sort of you know the higher self and all of that kind of stuff. And he was certainly talking about trying to be more positive and changing the negative into the positive. And that's exactly how you've related it to the workshops that we've been running. And you're right. Mm. I think um, a lot of people. Obviously, when everybody was locked down, you know, you had to come up with some new solution of how to, to bring people back together again. And that's what we did. But yes, you could look at it negatively and go, as you say, oh, we're indoors. We're now isolated. But actually, when you go online and work on the Zoom platform, which is that as an example, a lot of our students have said, I think this is incredible because I would have never have been able to take a class with Gary or Nicholas or whoever it was across the other side of the world. We have so many American students who join us and they're able as well because they're in their living room to show us their kind of quilting walls um, and, and say to you or, you know, show you a piece of work that they're, oh, oh, Gary, let me just show you this because I did this a while ago. And if they'd come to a class, they wouldn't have brought that with them. No. And it is fantastic. So, yes, that if you if you look at things in a more if you change the way you look at things and you look at things in a more positive light then the things you look at change because they in turn become more positive yeah, and that's okay. what people mean i think when they say that if you that positivity breeds positivity if you look at things in a more positive way more positive things will come to you and i absolutely believe it i'm not so sure i think when the secret first came out everybody kind of sat there and thought okay so if i sit here and say i'm going to win the lottery i'm going to win the lottery i'll win the lottery no <laughs> it's not that's not gonna happen um, <laughs> But, you know, if you, you know, if you are more positive about things and, and try and see it, and, and, you know, I've had some knockbacks in the last few weeks uh, where things have not quite worked out. And then it's, isn't it always the way that a few weeks later you go, oh, thank goodness that happened because the timing wasn't right. It's like divine timing. It wasn't right then, but now it's right now. So thank goodness it didn't happen weeks ago. Thank goodness it just happened now. Oh, that's my umbrella. I hope it's not going to happen anyway. <laughs> It's going to bring the whole thing down the anyway. joys the joys of filming out on location outdoor filming <laughs> and outdoor. that's actually it's just saying about you know that positive thinking and about actions so it's um i think yes i mean i agree there was that the secret out and it was about just sort of put up uh, so like think about it and it will happen but that was too simple that is far too yeah. simple now i'll tell you and it's about actually you want something to happen okay you can really you know think about it and think how you're going to be doing that thing, how it's going to all come together. But actually, you physically got to start to attempt to do it. So you've got to make some physical motion towards it. So yeah. for instance, so just things that can happen to, and this is completely, this is what happened to me this week. I must tell you this story that happened this week. You hold on to your umbrella. I'm just casually <laughs> holding on to the umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> the winds have got up. This is, uh, yeah, so what happened was, right, so, um, I was in, I had this little, um, this little group locally that's an, uh, an, a passionate art group. Lovely, lovely, all these talented people all doing artworks. And they now and again can um, afford to have me to come in and just do a session with them all. And I just do a lesson with them. And that was pre lockdown. So I went physically to them and I taught them maybe once or twice a year. And then they have their little exhibition of all their artwork and it's fantastic. Well, they haven't been able to do that for two years. Um, but some of them still come to here into my studio. I have like three or four of them come to visit me. So they sent me an invitation saying this was the first um, art exhibition they'd had for two years. Or would I go? And, you know, like we have so many things going on in our lives. And it, it means that, you know, oh, you know, I have to put that time aside. And I thought, no, I am going to go. I'm going to support them because it is a big step to then, you know, go back to having an exhibition. And, you know, what would they have there? Anyway, I went along. It was a Friday evening. They were so chuffed to see me. Oh, we're so pleased you've come. And it was really nice for you to come all this way to see us. 
I went, I saw lots of lovely pieces of work, but I really felt inside, I just wanted to, I just had to purchase one piece of artwork, just one piece of artwork. And these aren't famous artists, so it's not like I'm purchasing a piece of artwork, which is an investment. It's not going to make me lots of money. It's not going to, you know, um, have to have a, some sort of security screen around it, but it's a small piece of artwork that's reasonably priced. And I thought, well, no, I'll, I, I found one that I really, really liked. And I thought that would fit in with me. So I bought it. Do you know, it was only, it was 40 pounds. It was 40 pounds and that was 40 pounds that I spent. So I bought it. That person that sold that piece of artwork was just like, wow, thank you so much, Gary, for buying my artwork. You know, you come to teach us and you're buying a piece of my artwork. I'm really happy. It's just like made her day. She said she'd deliver it. Only two days passed. It could have been, it, no, it was, the ne- it was the next day. It was the next day. So the next day, I get a message come through as a message and there'd been a there'd been an electric fire, you know, like you put things online and it was electric fire that I used to have here in the studio that was obsolete. I didn't need it. It was in the way. I don't need an electric fire in this studio. So I had about three months ago put it up online. I had a bit of interest, but no one really seriously wanted to buy it. And it was it was up for 40 pounds. Guess what? Someone messaged me. Is that electric fire still for sale? Yeah. Can I come in today? Yeah. So they came, bought it, forty pounds. So exactly. And then that per- the other person that I bought the artwork from has now said, Gary, can I? Can you? Um, can you send me all the stuff that you're doing online at the moment so I can send it out to the students so that they can see what you're doing? So it's like, oh my god, like a simple action. Amazing. Exactly. It's about Incredible. taking that positive action. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is what we're doing here, Gary, because we thought, you know, let's do something ourselves. Uh, As I say, we've created our own little TV series here. Um, But it's also for people who, you know, want to join in as well and learn something new. And it is, it's about spreading that word. You know, we haven't got 350,000 million subscribers. It doesn't matter. I don't care if just one person today watches and goes, I never knew that about satin. I don't care. That's brilliant. That's one more person in the world. And it's that ripple effect. It's that little pond ripple effect. This probably is going to fly over. So prepare yourselves, people. It's going to be a huge crash. Anyway. (laughs) Right. Shall I open? Open. My envelope. I'm very excited about this. I felt like it was my birthday when it arrived. Right, okay. So so tell us what we're going to be doing today then, Gary. Okay, so I've got in front of me exactly what I put into your into your envelope. So I put together, I've made it quite easy, I've made it relatively easy for you. So I've got one, two, there's four groups of fabrics. And so there's little, so you've got the same, I've got exactly the same as you. So I've got well, the they're colour coordinated with my outfit as well. I mean, how great <laughs> is that? <laughs> So I just I just wanted to to start you to begin to understand different fabrics and okay. how they feel and um, you know what you, what you can do with them because you know quite often because I mean Rachel you'll admit yourself you've got you have got knowledge because I know that I can extract the knowledge from you sometimes because by osmosis by yes, working with I've us a lot. You have learned a lot, you know, that you know the terms and things. But there are things that you necessarily you're not that sort of like um knowledgeable on. And one of them was fabrics, because you're saying, Oh, could that be made from a bit of linen? And I'm thinking, no, no, not linen, Rachel. It's it's cotton. Cotton is not linen, it's different. Anyway, so I thought, right, I'm gonna help you by sending you some swatches of fabrics from my stash. There's this stashes of fabrics. And we're just gonna just for like 10 minutes talk about and get you to feel these fabrics, and I'm gonna tell you what they're for, what they're made from, and what you can do with them. All right, so okay. as I said, Let's you have got four swatches. I want you, first of all, to pick up the swatch, which you think is a silk, is the silks, the silks fabric. I'm gonna hide that so you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> which one do you think it is? Which one do you think is the silks? Okay, let's, um, oh, okay, so I, sorry, I was just checking that the cameras were changing so people can see close up and they are. Okay. Um, right. Right. Okay. So the one that I think are the silks. Oh. Okay. 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 It's okay. Yep. It's got to be. It's got to be this one. Yes. This You're one. right. So it's quite. So it's nice. It's almost like you can tell because it's shiny. Yeah. And you can see that you've got. Um. It's all sort of like they're all in neutral. So I say they're neutrals. They're ivories, whites, and creams. And in fact, 
this is um, a little, it's almost like a little bridal pack. So sort of fabrics that yes. you choose for bridal wear and that sort of high end case work. It's only bridal because it's in cream and ivory. If these were brightly colored, it'd be like high end couture garments. Now yes. silk, silk is a protein fiber. So I want you to remember that. In the fiber content of the world, there's lots and lots and lots, but you can start to put them into like little ha little like groups. And one of them is a protein fiber. And it's a protein fiber because it's derived from, well, it's from um, the silkworm. So it comes from some, you know, from a creature. That a creature exert sort of like, ex um, from it comes protein, which is the, the fiber that it comes from. So it is protein. Now let's just go through, because I said to you, you might say I'm making that in silk and I go, okay, what type of silk? So I've given you lots of different types of silk. So on the, well, I, my top, my top of my pile is something very lightweight. What do you think that is on top there? What out of all the lightweight fabrics in silk can you this think? One. Yes. Okay, uh, let me just put that onto the, uh, yeah, onto speaker. There we go. Okay. Um, okay. So this one, I think, uh, is that was like a sort of vial, isn't it? Like a vial, vial. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like a vial. But then in fact, can you see that it's slightly when you look in the light, it's slightly wrinkled. There's a slight wrinkle in there. Yes, there is. Yes. Okay. So at the moment, it's been like quite pressed out. But if you was to just moisten that with steam, and it would go quite wrinkled. And that is a chiffon. So that is chiffon, lovely chiffon. Okay. And you can imagine it's quite floaty. Where, if you were making that into a garment, where would you, you know, where would you think? Do you think it would be, could you have it all over the garment? Would it be a detail on the garment? Or do you think, what do you no, think? No, I think it would be detail because obviously it's very see-through. So I think it would be some sort of, I mean, it might be sort of roughly, you know, like something around the neck. I mean, obviously, I don't know, would, would brides wear that in a, is that a veil? Well, it's a bit too dense for a veil, so yeah. it's not a veil, but it would be, you could have it as an overlay over a garment, so you wouldn't necessarily make the garment completely out of that because it wouldn't be structured enough and it'd be quite difficult, but you can have it as an overlay so it can be a long flowing skirt. Do you remember, um, now, can you picture Princess Diana getting out of that sports Mercedes with that lovely black cocktail dress on and that like a long sash? And, and it's, it's yes, and it flew that. out. That was black Georgette, beautiful, a black um, chiffon, black chiffon. Georgette, I just mentioned Georgette, it's very similar. Georgette just doesn't wrinkle so much. It's still sheer, but it doesn't have that slight wrinkle in it. So that is what it does. That will flow in the breeze. Lovely and ethereal, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's move on. And so annoy your ex-husband, that's what it does. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Just put on some <laughs> chiffon and annoy him. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Underneath, underneath, what is okay now? Um, I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you. Just okay. I tell you what. You describe it. Look at it and just describe it to me. Just describe. Well, do, you know, what you... do you know the first words that come to mind for me? And I know it's not this, but it's like cheesecloth. A bit, yes. Yeah. yeah. Because there is that. There is definitely a texture to it. Um, it's almost like in a way as well. You know when you. If you sort of pull threads and things, it's kind of yeah. like that. But there is definitely a texture. Um, okay. And it's obviously thicker as well compared to that yes. one. So in that, it is what's called a dupion silk. And it's made up of different widths of, of um, sort of like thread. So some of them are thick and some of them are fine. And it's what we call slubby. So it's like uneven. It's uneven. And you're even cat C in there but there is almost like little catches. It looks like seeds sometimes. Yes. So you look, it looks like seeds caught in it. And actually that is just the, the cocoon that the silk is wrapped in. That's just a bit of the um, sort of like the less natural, um, the less pure part of the cocoon has got caught into the weed, but it gives it that nice natural feel for it. Now, Dupion silk makes beautiful. Yes, you can use it for bridal. And in fact, um, going back to Princess Diane again, a lot of that, it will crunch up. Do you remember when she got out of the carriage in her bridal dress and it was scrunched up? That's what, that's what Dupion Silk does. It's scrunched right. up just like that. So it does crease up quite, quite 
a lot. But it's great for, um, it's quite nice in bridesmaids dresses, those little nice little tiny little dresses. It's also used in interior design. So you got quite often, especially if you think about it in color, you'll see it in lovely draped silk curtains. Obviously you'd have to line them, but the only thing with that is, and with all silks, it's this one of the most strongest fibers, but it is destroyed by sunlight. So if bright light gets onto silk, it will start to deteriorate and start to break down. Not a lot else will break down silk, but light will, and it makes it brittle and it makes it go. So quite often you'll see beautiful silk drapes at the window, but because the light has got to it, quite often they start to tear or they start to disintegrate. So there's something to remember about silk. Okay, move over. Right, next one underneath there. This. So the next one has got a sheen to it. Yes. So yep. what would you call that then? If you've got silk that's got a sheen to it. Well, I would call would... that a satin. Is that a satin? Yes. yes. <laughs> Perfect. So silks which have got a polished, it's got, it's a, in fact, we call it a polished layer, a polished side to it. So it doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily shiny each side, but it's shiny one side and it's polished. And the one that you're holding up is um, uh, a satin crepe. So it's yeah. a satin crepe and a satin crepe is designed to be cut on the bias. So right. imagine lovely, beautiful. If you think about historical costumes, 1930s bias cut dresses, those glamorous um, starlit dresses that sort of drape and a liquid on the body. Well, I'm thinking of very similar to what I'm wearing today because it's that sort of shape, isn't it? It's that, yeah. Yes, yeah. that sort of shape. Yes. So we would cut that on, that's cut on the bias. So not yeah. necessarily on the straight grain, it's cut across the grain. So then yeah. it becomes, a, it's like a woven, when you cut something on the bias, a woven fabric almost becomes like a stretch fabric. It becomes more liquid. It much more forms around the body. So a uh, satin crepe is ideal for that. Absolutely. Now, if you lift that over and go to the next one, yep. that is still, that is what we call double crepe. And yep. that is just, again, does the same purpose, but it's got a little bit more body to it. So it's a little yes, bit heavier. Yes, and certainly less shine as well. Yeah. yeah so, it's not a, so it's not a satin, it's a crepe yes. without the polished. So one side has not been polished in manufacture. And so therefore it's still got a bit of luster to it because it's silk, but it's got that lovely, it's a heavier weight and it will still make those beautiful, like those dresses that just sort of cling to you. The ones where you almost you don't wear underwear underneath because it will cling so much you'll be able to see it. Obviously, you've got to have a wow figure to wear them, but yeah. it does look really nice. So if, you know, when your daughters and your granddaughters and everything like that are, are moaning, say you could wear a bias cut dress and just make the most of it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Is that a more expensive? Is that a more expensive um, fabric then than the than the the satin that we just showed? Because that to me feels like it would be more expensive. It, okay. it looks like so, a more luxury fabric to me. A little bit more. I mean, it might be literally just a few dollars or a few pounds more. But in yeah. fact, you've got to think about the manufacture. So though that has just been woven, obviously it's still been processed. But when you actually then put a satin finish on something, that has to go through more processes so the processes to get the satin the polish on it is going to be more time and more processing so again yeah. that makes the, the cost come up okay. um, right where, where are we we have got only what we've got two left we've got two left so the next one yeah now we're getting on to the real serious bridal sort of like heavyweight bridal very fabric. much so very much okay so. so the next one has got can you see it's got like almost like a grain running through it, a line running through it Yes, yes, very, very fine. But yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. So the clue in the name is called Grow Grain, Grow Grain Silk. And again, it's a lovely weight to it. And you can have a beautiful Ooh. dress made from that. I was just going to say, um, when I was working on the old craft channels, and they used to do this with the fabric. Now, why? I remember they used to go, or yeah. to hear the difference right. in sound. Okay, so what's that about? How, what, what's that telling me? Well, that's telling you when you just like snap it like that across, you can feel the density by doing that. You can actually hear the density of the fibers and the fabric and the, the quality of it as well. So if you get that nice snap, you know that it's a nice, a nice quality, a nice heavyweight fabric. 
So it's not fine. It's not unevenly um, woven or anything like that, that it's got a really nice snap to it, that it just yeah. feels nice. And, you know, I, I mean, it just makes me come to mind that there is a, that um, thing that we need to consider about buying fabrics online and actually going to a fabric shop to buy them. Now, personally, yes, both have got their place and definitely one's got a convenience from shopping at home and the other one's like, oh, I've got to go and find a fabric shop to, you know, to to um to see the fabric it is seeing but also it is the touching so when we yeah. buy fabric we touch it and we feel it and we can actually see what the potential is of that fabric so there is definitely a um a need or a a place for um shops that have got fabric the other thing you can do is when you are buying online it might be worth you just almost considering purchasing a swatch Oh, because quite often they won't just give swatches away for free. You might have to purchase them. So especially with the expensive, like when you with silk fabrics and suppliers will give you a swatch book or you can ask for swatches of different fabrics that you've seen online or in a catalog. Because you do, you know, if you're making quite a few you know, pounds worth of purchase, no matter even if it's a meter, you could be paying up to like, you know, 20 odd pounds for just a meter of this fabric. Yeah. And so therefore you need to think, is it the right type of fabric? Is the quality good? Because even though perhaps it might be described as what it is, until it gets into your hands, until you see it in front of you, do you know, yes, that is what I want for what I'm making. Be that a garment, be that something for the interior or be that for a craft project. You know, you need to be able to feel it. OK, the last one, I suppose, is one of the um, sort of like the I would say the clues in name. It's the one of the royalties in silk. So it's a royalty. What would you think this is? It's very, very dense, very thick. It's polished. So it's got a, um, it's a, one of the, from the satin family. So it's a satin. Yeah. What do you think that is? What do you think that is? Oh, I don't know, Gary. I don't know. I did say it's something in the royal. So it's royal. The clues in it. No. <laughs> it's a duchess satin. Oh, okay. So a duchess satin. A duchess I've never satin. heard of that. I've never heard Have of that. Have you not? That. No, Have but you not? it's funny because when I felt it and looked at it out of all of these, I thought if the queen was having something oh. made, like a coat... Yes. That's yeah. what it would be made of. Yeah. That's the Absolutely. one I thought she would have a beautiful, I can see her in a lovely sort of emerald green, you know, little round necked, beautiful coat. And that's that's what I felt it would be made of. And do you know that? And you, see, again, osmosis, you're, you are doing things without even knowing, because I was going to say that actually this tailors really nicely. So rather than looking at this type of fabric that's quite sort of like structured, it's quite dense, it's got some thickness to it as well and it is polished but what it does do is makes very structured garments so it yes. would do very well for like for tailoring for a lady's tailoring and um, you'd also could have a very nice beautifully fitted bodice made from this duchess satin. yes and yeah you had, you know, and again if you imagine that 1950s style when it went nice and nipped into the waist that hour class look where it went into the waist and then the full skirt came out you've got that massive full skirt that would you know Duchess satin be lovely a lovely weight to it as well yeah, okay that's, that, okay. that's the silk right yeah. next next Rachel let's can go let's ask you one question on that Duchess silk does that crease easily and would the creases fall out because you know Diana's dress the other silk was a bit of a nightmare yeah well I, I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap my brain what it what it Diana's dress was I think it's what's called a taffeta so it had the same sort of taffeta had the same sort of um quality as a um as the dupion so taffeta yeah. does crunch up and crease I mean it looks amazing when it's fresh and it's really crunchy and it's just and it, you can make look you can put volumes of the fabric in and it's not too heavy yeah Dutch's satin actually would not crease as much not as much and it would drop out much better than some of the other silks but again you know when people I used to do you know obviously you know I I was a, a fashion designer and did fashion design I used to make um not, I did some bridal but I did a lot of vocational wear and they would say oh but you know like you say but doesn't it crease or anything like that and I used to say <laughs> when you're wearing one of my dresses you're not sitting down so you would go into a room and you would just you know people would see you don't want to sit down in a beautiful dress like that you want people to see the dress and what you're going to do so yes it would crease if you crunched it up and tried to get in a small carriage and tried to get to the church. What but did it, you think about Diana's dress then from a fashion oh perspective? 
I was just a child. <laughs> just, yeah, of course. What did you, what did you know? I'm just looking if we've got any comments, by the way. Oh, <laughs> hello, lovely Jan Fletcher. She says, oh, my gosh, this is so, so interesting. She is loving it. <laughs> hello, oh, lovely Jan. Right. Thank you, Janet. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, I was just, because I was always, even from a young boy, I was interested in fashion and design. And, of course, there was that big hype up from... You know what the Emmanuels were going to be creating this dress in you know together they were doing this dress and the whole hype for that I must say even in my younger days I thought mm, it's all a little bit creased I hope someone and they did they sort of rallied round her to try and get it out but I was just what what took me I just loved the silhouette of the dress I mean that was so of the time in the 80s the very early 80s and that sort of like a Beauty and the Beast Cinderella you know they were yeah. all the as, as a boy growing up that was interested in textiles and fashion, and everything like that, you know, they were the sort of films and the cartoons that I would watch to inspire me to then when I was drawing and making my little mini garments as a lad before I then got onto bigger garments. So yeah, it, it, I loved it. And it is definitely like, had the wow factor. I did part of my brain thinking, oh, it's a little bit creased. That needs to get sorted out. But I was just looking at the silhouette of the garments like, wow, I can't wait to get into my, my bedroom and start making a similar thing on one of my like little mannequins that I used to work on. So yeah, yeah. I, I actually went to see Diana's dress only um, a, a short while ago. Um, right. It was an exhibition at Kensington Palace, and I wanted to go see because I, you know, I know it's been around and I'd never seen it, and uh, it was quite amazing when you see it in real life. But strangely, you know that long train. They had the train out, and. Um, it, strangely, when you saw it on TV and it was going yeah. down all the steps and it was so long behind it, maybe it's because it was on a person. It looks like it was 25 miles long. And yet when it was in this glass box and it was just, it didn't look that long. I mean, it was right. long, but it didn't, it didn't have that. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it didn't have a wow factor. It did. But what I'm saying is it didn't have that. Whoa, that's a long train. You just kind of looked at it and thought, yeah, that's a Royal train. Um, yeah. it just, you know, it was quite amazing seeing it, but yeah. Yeah, it was incredible seeing it, um, but it was very 1980s. Right, <laughs> let's move on to our next bundle then. OK, then. I want you to pick up what I was going to say would be um, the cotton. So the, we've gone from silk and now we're going down to the other spectrum and talk about... No, well... No. Oh, these, the these are the cottons. The neutrals, OK. So the, you were, you know, you were right, actually. I can't take a point off you because you have got some <laughs> cottons there, but we'll come to that in a minute. <laughs> we'll come to that in a minute. Now, working from the back, let's work from the back. Yeah. What? Now, I use this fabric a lot, and I've given you a clue. So a cotton, so first of all, a cotton is not a protein fibre. It's a cellulose fibre. So think it's made from plant material. So I'm saying cotton, but we're going to move on to other things that aren't cotton. But this is a bundle of cellulose fiber. All right. So it's cellulose fiber. Now, if I was to burn this or do it like a little burn test, and we're not going to do this live on the show because it just will, anything can happen. But literally, I would use a lighter and I just put the lighter on the end and just cinch it. And I would smell smell it or get it, just waft it. One, it would smell of burning paper. The other thing that when I put my fingers to it like that, it would just all powder away. If I did it to the protein fiber, it would smell of burning hair and it would still all powder away. So if you want to sort of that, oh, what's protein, what's cellulose? One smells of burning hair because it's made of protein. The other smells of burning paper because it's made of, of Plant material like wood. That's how you need to remind that. Okay, I digress. Let's go to the one at the back. Got the okay. one at the back? Are you sure it's yeah. at the back? Yeah, the the, the sort of creamy coloured one. That That's one. it. Yeah. That's it. Okay, Rachel. So, what do you think that is? I use this quite a lot in my textiles. Um, uh, is it is a linen the same thing as a cotton? Is it a linen? Is it? No, I don't know. You use it so in it your is, textiles. I should know this because you talk about this all the I time. I talk about it a lot. And, I, um, and it's, well, it's cotton-based, so it's a cotton base, but it is a certain type of cotton. It's really reasonable. It's very cheap. And it's almost, if I say it's in its raw state. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's calico. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I knew that. Clearly. I knew that. that. 
<laughs> okay. So Calico. Calico has got, um, it's not been bleached, actually. It's not been over bleached. So that's what gives it its creamy texture. And like the Dupion, can you see little seeds caught in the weave as well? Little bits. Yes. 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 So it's not the, the, the cotton fiber has not been over processed. And so bits of that cotton, the, the plant, the some of the seeds in that cotton are getting caught within the in the weave of the fabric. So they've got caught in the fibers of that fabric. So they, what they, you know, oh, go on. Because I was, was going to say, say yeah. <laughs> would go you on. what would you use to make because Diana's dress, they had the pre versions that they put on her before the big dress. Would you use calico? No. And what is that? Okay, you're right on it. You really are spot on, spot on. What is it? What is that pre, those mock up garments called? What are they called, Rachel? It's on the tip of my tongue because I read it all and I saw it and I can't remember. Oh. It's called a toile. That's it, a toile, that's it. That's a it. toile. So a toile, T-O-I-L-E, a toile, is um, a mock-up of a version of the garment. And so in fashion design, especially when you're creating couture, high-end, yeah. you make up a, at least one mock-up, if not a couple of mock-ups, in calico. So it's, it's calico is good because, it, one, it's very, it's, again, it's that structure. It's yeah. very cheap. Yeah. You can draw all over it. So you, what I used to either on the mannequin behind me or on the body. So I've made it for a client. I've made a mock-up of the garment. The, the client can see, can feel what it looks like in the proportion. So from drawing to mock-up of the garment, and it's made in calico. But then I can get my biro or my felt tip out and I can draw on it. I can cut bits away. I can pin it. It's not going to damage the fabric. It doesn't matter if it gets damaged. Plus... I can then, once I've done that, I can take it apart, I can cut it all apart or unpick it, and then I can use this as my final pattern. Yes. So calico, calico's amazing. I love calico and it's so reasonable. And, um, and another thing you can do with it as well, rather than at the moment, this has got um, the finishing in it, which gives it a sort of like its stiffness. So they all fabrics have a finishing put in them. And that's why our clothes, the more we wash them, the softer they get and some of them lose their shape. That's because a lot of the finishing has been washed out of them. This has got finishing in. But you can wash this. You can wash it on maybe a 40 degree wash or even slightly higher. And it takes the finishing out of it. Calico then becomes very soft. You can use it for dyeing. So any of these, these natural fibers that I'm showing you today, you can use for natural dyeing. So you can dye it with natural pigments. You can do indigo dyeing with it. And um, rather than syn synthetic design, uh, dyes you can use this all with your natural dyes as well as long as you've washed out the coating so there's always a coating um a finishing within these fabrics so you can wash this and i've washed this and then i can paint on it so then i washed it and then i paint it with dyes i'll paint it with my ordinary um paints and it absorbs it rather than sitting on the top and wiping off it actually absorbs because you've washed away that that finishing anyway that's calico okay. calico i think if i had to make a choice Calico is my top fabric because oh. it's so useful. So, so versatile, Rachel. So versatile. Yes. Okay. Yes. Underneath that one, what right is one. that? Yes. I do not. Oh, now wait. No. You see, okay. I've got, all, I've got all these terms in my head, but I just don't. I'll tell know. you what, the clue. I'll let you pair it with the one next to it. So the one that's like the beigey brown one. And they are the same. One's bleached. One has got a, um, a like a beigey colour to it. So if you hold those up and they look, ex they if you look at the weave in them, they're quite the same. Yes, they are. Well, this quite looks like a linen to me. Yes, yes, yes. It is a linen. So this is not a cotton. So this is not made from cotton, like the seed, the like that fluffy seed, that cotton bud seed. This is made from a plant called flax. So flax grows around the world. So linen, you'll find linen, examples of linen from in, in Egyptian mummies through to, you know, parts of the UK and in garments and in bedding. So beautiful linen sheets, linen bedding, but also it makes nice, cool garments. There's a quality of it that is when you make it into a garment or you use it, it's lovely to handle. It's, it's, um, it, it's cooling, 
so that's quite often we wear a lot of linen garments in the summer, especially if you're in a very hot country. You know, you look yeah. at those those pictures of those um, explorers in um, very hot tropical countries. They always wore linen yeah. because it was you could still keep quite smart, but it was, you know, cooling. But it does crease. And really, you say, well, how do you get the creases out? Well, I would say, you know, you could press it and everything. But as soon as you put it back on again, it, cres- it creases again. Go with the creases. Go with the creases. So if something naturally wants to do something, then accept it and go with the creases. So a yeah. bit like a mindful thing, you know, that is quite a mindful practice. I want this fabric to be pressed and crisp and nice. No, it's natural thing is that it wants the crease. So accept the creases, wear the creases. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, so so when we, that's something I didn't know. So Egyptian cotton. So when you go to one of these fancy hotels and you have beautiful Egyptian cotton sheets, um, is it because they are, it is cooling? So it's not just the quality and it feels nice, but Egyptian cotton is actually quite well cooling. Fabric. Egyptian cotton is actually, is made from cotton. So it's about how many um, threads, the thread count and the fineness of the thread in the weave. Yeah. So it is, it is still cotton. This is linen, so linen, so you can have linen sheets and linen is really nice and cooling as well. So they are different, they're different fibers. So Egyptian cotton is just very nice, Ooh. fine sheets that have got many, many layer, many, many thread counts or like lines of weaving in its content. Yeah. Whereas linen is just made from flax and again can be made into bedding as well so this could be made into linen sheets but it also you quite often find it used for things like um tea towels for glass cloths for cleaning you know when you it's got like almost like woven through it linen t- tea cloth or uh, for glasses and things like that so it's great for um household linen as well so as well as wearing it it's because it's durable it's quite strong it will last and probably linen i think probably has a longer life than cotton cotton tends to be finer yeah and in in it's whereas linen is much more stronger more durable as well so yeah that's your linen made from flax rather than um the cotton seed bud so yeah and it's grown all over the world so that's my bit of trivial about linen okay okay right next one right the next one if you pick up the next one yeah which is this one yeah what does that feel like? Now, that's actually quite a sort of see-through uh, fabric, isn't it? You can you can actually see through it. So if, you want, you know, if you're looking at garments with that, I don't think that would be a great one to make a garment out of because you can see through it. Um, but I don't know. It feels that we're almost sort of going towards, I know it's not, but it feels like we're going towards felt in terms of it's got <laughs> really, it's like, um, is it a brushed cotton? I don't know. Well, really good, really good. So um, it is, it's a cotton, it's a fine cotton. So it's yeah. a pure cotton. It's quite fine. So when we were talking, before about the Egyptian cotton it's got lots of fine thread count running through it which is really really nice it is it's been washed several times this piece of cotton so a cotton will have a nice soft finish once you keep washing it and every you know do things like that Um, and yes you can get a version which is slightly denser which would be a brushed cotton so yes you can get brushed cotton which again is a finishing process on the top of the fiber so on top of the woven fabric it's then um agitated with um, almost like a wire brush to brush up those top fibers and then that becomes a brushed cotton which is really nice and of course the because you've brought the fibers up a bit like the hairs on well probably my arm when i'm cold my hairs come up so it's trapping air so brushed cotton is nice and cozy because it actually traps more hair into the fiber so it's bringing ahead so it's nice on brushed cotton sheets in the winter or pajamas and things like that because it's nice and cozy and it keeps you more slightly warm just because they brushed all the fibers up and it's trapping air into it like that okay right <laughs> keep going rachel you're getting there I'm, going, I'm doing well i'm doing well the next one if you hold yeah. that one up that's quite fine now quite have you, have you got the one which is quite see-through uh the one that we just talked about was that one and then yeah. the next one that's it yes hang on oh that one yeah. yes oh right okay yes okay. now you can see the weave in there can't you yes now now this could be used in food manufacture what do you think it is oh well it's like a cheesecloth yeah <laughs> so it's like cheesecloth muslin so it's a muslin yes, so we've got, muslin. so again 
you can you again this is pure cotton but it's got that open weave so again we see it in cheese making so yeah. it's again because fluids can strain through it so you can strain things through it you could do your jam making through this so you know when you're making jellies in your jam you could strain it through some muslin you can use it to make a little herb bag so maybe you have a little square of this muslin and you put a bunch of little herbs you can put it up, put a bit of string around it and just dangle it over the side of your stew pot. And then you can lift the herbs out so they're not all in your stew, but the flavour's imparted. But also you can use it as an interlayer. So between, to give more body to things, you can put this muslin in between the layers, which won't detract from the top fabric that you're using, but it would just give it a bit more quality. So just a bit more heavier weight, but it's great. And again, we see it in textiles quite a lot. We use it for all sorts of things you can use it because it frays it's very lightweight it does all sorts of things so it's really nice to be able to you know just take little strips of it pick it apart stitch it into your embroidery and things like that takes dye very well everything like that okay last one on this section now this one this is going to throw you but i just want really i just want you to feel it and touch it compared to the other ones what does it feel like yeah i mean this feels really lovely i mean although i have to say i think if you were because i was going to say this would make a really nice summer dress but i have to say if you were wearing this i think you'd be quite warm in it mm. um it's it's quite a dense sort of fabric um you know it looks nice it kind of feels nice on the skin but i think it would be quite warm to wear okay. um so right. it'd be quite nice to wear to have a sort of shirt made out of it that was because it would mm. it would it would fall lovely but i think it would have a nice warmth to it as well so i don't know what it is but it just feels okay. very now, nice i'm not i'm going to be really fair to you and i'm not going to make you guess what the fiber is because you probably won't you might you might have heard of it and come across it but in fact that's bamboo oh so it's bamboo so it's still cellulose but actually it's made from bamboo and it's lovely it's got quite it's quite a dense weave to it but it's got a lovely drape quality to it and yes you do get it in garments as well. And actually, can you imagine actually underwear made from bamboo? Because it's, yeah. it's lovely. It's, it's breathable. So it's lovely and breathable. It's not as expensive as silk, but it's got that lovely soft quality to it as well. So it made really nice undergarments also. So bamboo yes. is a lovely. And so that's one of the new fibres. So that's a new fibre. So we talked about very traditional fibres, but there are ways of making fibre from newly found things and as bamboo grows very um as you know if you've ever had bamboo in the garden it takes over and it, it grows really fast you know it yeah. doesn't take long to grow and so it's plentiful it's quick to grow and then that fiber content of bamboo can be made into a um into a thread so that's how we get them so that's all your cellulose fibers there do they all use right? that in bedding as well the bamboo um yes. sheet? i think from yes. my shopping tv days i'm sure there yeah. was a um a bedding company that we're using bamboo yeah absolutely so yeah. again and it's lovely and it, that softness of it so you're sort of yeah. making that it's not a compromise but it's yeah. on par with having like lovely satin or silk sheets to yeah. then having bamboo sheets uh, yeah. but it's lovely and breathable and it's a, you know it's relatively affordable yeah. okay i want you to pick up not the the colored one now i still want you to go to one more which we haven't covered so one more section that's it. OK, yeah. Rachel. So what's that then? That's quite it must be got easy. OK, <laughs> well, these look like tweeds to me. Yes. So what um, family would we put those under then? So what would they be? Oh, I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so they're the yeah, they're walls. They're the walls. Walls, of course. Walls. Of course. And would it be so if they're another grouping, is it would you say wool is going to be a cellulose? Um, fiber or a protein fiber? Oh, I'm going to go with protein. <laughs> yes, <laughs> protein <laughs> because wool is the hair of the sheep, isn't yeah. it? Yes, it's the hair of the sheep. So when you burn this, the test is it wool? Is it pure wool? It will smell a burning hair, and it will go. And in fact, on the edges when it burns, it have like little crusty little nuggets. They go in little crusty nuggets, so you can just crunch them. But I'm being very technical here. You can crunch them between your fingers and it would disintegrate. So they just disintegrate. So they're not hard, solid lumps. They disintegrate. So at the back, we've got your basic. Basic. What is at the back there? Now, something we don't necessarily see very often now. Yeah, I don't know, but it feels lovely. 
Okay, so you've actually picked up the second to the back one. Have I? So, uh, have yeah, you? it's on the back. Oh, no. the back. I might have mixed them up. Right. So you've got a wall blanket. Yes. Yes, that's the wall blanket. This one. Yeah, one yes. is a wall blanket. The other one next to it yeah. is a mixture of wool and cashmere. Oh. Lovely. So really soft. So, you know, if you put the wall blanket to your face, it's a little bit scratchy and you wouldn't really want to be wearing it. I mean, a lot of people don't like wool next to their skin, but you've got wool and cashmere there. So that one is the wool and cashmere? Yes. Yes, because that's the one I said feels lovely and I'd like something made out of it. Of course I would. Of course I would, exactly. Gary. Of course I'd want a cashmere jumper. Um, but I have I have bought cashmere jumpers when they're usually in the sale um, and they are fabulous. And if you take care yes. of them, they last forever and they feel divine and they don't, you know, make you hot and sweaty. They're really lovely. So, uh, yes, that's a, a wool mix cash, uh, cashmere. Yeah. And as you say that, yes, that's quite scratchy. Yes, yeah. blanket. No, we don't have blankets. So you don't see blankets that often. Um, no. You know, we, all of us, I can remember having blankets on my bed and an eider down and sheets yes. and things like that. We now have yes. duvet. But yeah. what's like, if you can get, if you ever come across old blankets, they're lovely because, in fact, you can use these old blankets as interlining in your quilts. So if you don't want to use a wadding or a synthetic wadding, the blanket is a lovely substitute for that sort of a, a warm interline lining to put in between your quilt. So it is something to consider. And so funnily enough, I've just had a delivery of four vintage um, blankets washed, beautifully washed, and they're in my stash because I'll be using blankets for something because it's just something you can't get hold of anymore and they're really, really useful. Yeah. Okay. The next two are what I call suiting fabrics. Yes. Okay. So, and again, you said it at the beginning, you said... Tweeds. What, tweeds. So tweeds, lovely tweeds. So one's quite a heavyweight tweed, and the other one is, again, is much more of a softer, lighter weight fabric. So we've got two different seasons here, or two different where we could wear these walls. One could be an outer garment, one could be uh, under that garment. So as a, a lightweight suit or a summer weight suit. Well, going back to the Royal Connection, and we are talking about Charles and Diana quite a lot here, but do you remember their honeymoon when they were in Edinburgh or wherever it yes. was? No, they were in the hills yes. somewhere and um, she didn't look very happy. Uh, <laughs> but if you think what about their outfits, <laughs> but if you think about their outfits, this is what we're talking about here because and and when you talk about two different uses i mean i would say that charles would have had his suit you know or his his, his kilt or his jacket whatever he had on that's quite yeah. a thick heavy manly texture whereas if she was going to have something made out of the tweeds she would be going with something like that because yes. it's softer and drapier and just yeah. nice yeah. yeah so yes you yeah. can see you can see the difference there and in fact, in the um, the softer one, you've got a little bit of cashmere in there. You can feel yes, the cashmere. Yes, you can feel softness. it. Yeah, you can feel it, definitely. Yeah, and that's, it's much more, that's So it's nice. a much more finer, finer wall. I mean, if you're talking technical different walls, walls, you get more of a, um, a rougher type of wall strand. So that's the individual hair. So it's quite, it's quite, it's thicker and it's rougher. And then you get much more finer strands. So they become much more towards what we call the worsted wool. So the much more finer wool to be able to be made into much more finer fabrics for dresses, for lovely lighter weight garments, rather than more your heavier weight ones, which are much more your traditional heavier weight walls, which make great outer garments. And also, you know, things like, um, you know, um, like, kilts and things like that so it would be a variation of a type of tweed but it's just a you know it's a um you know it's a different weave and everything like that but no so they're your walls so that's all about wool and again is it is it a cellulose fiber no it's a protein <laughs> <laughs> I've learned something today. Oh, going well, I just did because that when you're teaching someone, it's called checking learning. <laughs> yes, and Lisa Malone has joined us. Hello, lovely Lisa Malone. Oh, Lisa. One of our regular crafty monkeys loves Gary's classes, and Lisa has just said there, this is like a science test. I am loving it. <laughs> I know it's fabulous. I just didn't realize I'm going to learn so. I well. haven't got Lisa. I haven't got my Bunsen burner with me, but I've got um, a lighter. Is that? <laughs> I'm not even going to go there because you know what will happen. I'll set my hair on fire, my dress will be on fire. The brolly will go off. It'll yeah. be a disaster. So, right, okay. we've got three more left. Three more. You've got your final, final, final. So this is this is going to be about, this is about fibre. This is about fibre. 
but it's about what well, I wanted to talk to you about this. I want you to uh, describe to me. <laughs> I just said, uh, did I get you to describe it? I, I want you to describe the print. So the print, what is, the, what when we look at prints, prints on, you know, on, on fabrics, the fibre content, now you should be able to tell me the fibre, what is it printed on, Rachel? Okay, well, that's a cotton. Yes, perfect. It's a cotton. And most likely it's going to be a cotton, though it could be a poly cotton. And I'll talk about that in a minute. The print on it, the little, the little um, sheep, the little sheep and lambs all over it. Can you tell me a bit about the print? Is the print linear? Is it all over the place? And can you wear that in any direction? Woo! If you're going to put it on the body or put it in the face. Let me look at the comments and see if anybody's telling me. Uh, no, I know. No. Um, by the way, Lisa has said, good morning. And uh, those are the days when they let kids play with gas and naked flames. Yes, in science labs. Remember those days. So, OK. So I think um, this. Yeah. So this print is not directional. I think it is. So is that does that mean linear then? When it's not directional, it's linear. It just means it's a, it's completely it's even like, across, like yeah, across yeah. the whole thing, which means, yes, I could wear this absolutely any way that I wanted. So I'm presuming okay. that that is an easier fabric to work with as a dressmaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is like this. And, fabric also, I'm in, and also in your quilts as well. So it's called a multi it's a multi directional print. So it's not like it's not in blocks, it's not in lines, it's not facing up one way, which means if you're going to put it in something, be that on the body or in the space or on the textile in the interior, you've got to think which way up it's going to go, because someone's going to say, that's upside down. With yeah. you've got a multi-directional print, when you see it, when you think, oh, I can turn it corner to corner, side to side, and it works, that's a multi-directional print. And that's probably one of the most useful prints you can have in your stash because it is so versatile. Now, the print, again, we can talk about scale. This is a small scale print. So it's quite small. I mean, you could go smaller than this. And you've got like what we call a ditzy, tiny ditzy, tiny little prints, could be little dots or anything like that. But that's small. So again, we can talk about it. it's quite a small scale, which like even on your blouse that you're wearing or your top of your dress that you're wearing now is a small scale print of a little like it's like a small animal print that's been like miniaturized. Yeah. Hasn't it? So it's almost like miniaturized print. But again, then we can have larger scale. So we have we can still have a multi-directional print, but it can be in a larger scale. So we can talk about scale. We've got multi-directional. We've got lines, grids, things like that in our prints. Just remember what when you think about when you look in your stash, think, ah, that's a multi-directional or that is in the lines or something like that. OK, the last two bits in there. What do we call these things? What do we call them when it's just one colour? What are they, Rachel? They are... Well, it's just when, when it's just one color. It's just a. It's just. It's just a block of color. It's a color block. It's. Um, yeah. 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 It's just a block of color. Just block. It's block color, or what we call solids. Solids. Solid. Solids. These words are all in the back of my head. I just can't bring them forward. And, solids. And it's like a whole. You, you know, in textiles, it's like you need a dictionary and a, a, like this, like vast knowledge. These, yeah, block block colors, um, solids things like that so and, and bold colors accent colors things like that one of these they're all like they're cottons they're cottons but one of them's a poly cotton which one's the poly cotton rachel how would you tell <laughs> this is the final i promise you this is the final little question i'm gonna ask you Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the red is the poly cotton. It's not, is it? Da -da. <laughs> no! Oh you've lost a million pounds. I'm gonna, have to, keep, I'm gonna have to keep going on YouTube then if I've lost a million pounds. <laughs> I was having I jets doing, waiting and everything to take me. Just when you were doing so well and you got all that score, and then suddenly at the end. What a shame. No. And uh, do you know, I can't blame because it is so difficult to tell. Very difficult to tell. Sometimes on the handling quality, you can tell which one's polyester and which one's cotton. The cotton one might be built maybe slightly rough, slightly more drying on the hands rather than the poly cotton. So this green one is a poly cotton. Yes. And I think it's a really good point to sort of 
you know, pull this like little bit of fabric identification exercise together is because there are a lot of mixtures on the market, a lot of both pure synthetics, but they're mixtures of synthetic. So you can get a polyester put into wool, you can get a polyester put into cotton, you can get a polyester mixed in with some silk fiber as well. So they are, it's a mix. And there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes it hasn't got the handling or the quality that you have from other, those other natural fibers. You know, if you, had, if you had said to me, right, I'm not blaming you, but if you said to me, which is the polyester, I probably would have gone for that green. And you know why? And I'm being honest here. Yeah. It, because when we, poly cotton, I didn't realize that poly cotton was polyester. So, but polyester is, in my mind, it's like it feels like a cheaper fabric because, as you say, it's got that mixture. And yes, that a, a, a proper 100% cotton to me is going towards that linen feel. It's going towards that quality. It's going towards that yeah. more denser fabric, whereas a polyester is a little bit, ooh, you know. Yeah. yeah little cheap t-shirt so yes just to point out for anybody else watching that if you know maybe if you think of polyester rather than polycotton because that's what i wasn't realizing mm. that's what it was so there you go i'm just making up for myself there <laughs> <laughs> so a poly you know polycotton the um on average the blend of cotton to polyester is sit i've got this written down 65 percent cotton to 35 percent polyester now polyester is a petrol based plastic so it's from petrol chemicals and it's a plastic that's added to it. It's obviously at the moment, you know, it's, oh, I don't know, the price of petrol is going up, but it's relatively quite cheap and it bulks and it would extend the fibre of the cotton to do that. But there are alternatives to polyester. So sometimes I see a lot in the shops now that they're actually doing recycled plastics. So plastics can be shredded up, reused, melted down and made into fibre. So quite often, sometimes now they're using recycled plastics, which is good because we're never gonna get plastics out of the environment. But what we need to remember is that polyester, cotton will not disintegrate in the earth. It will always, you know, necessarily, it will break up a little bit, the cotton content of it, but the polyester within it won't necessarily break up for thousands and thousands of years. But they can make polyester from plant material as well, but it's just not been developed enough at this moment. So if I wanted to find out, so I wanted to see, I've got my stash or I'm going into a shop and I love that fabric, but I think, mm, I'm not sure if that's pure. You get out your lighter, have a bucket of cold water or go outside. It's going to be happy. Yep. You just singe the edge. Yeah. You just singe the edge. One, the smell won't be very nice, won't be as nice as the others. Not that they're burning wood and the burning um, hair. But it's like you're burning great. plastic. Yes. But it's like you're burning plastic. So take care. But the best thing is, is that maybe don't smell it. Just, you'll see that the, where it's melted, it will curl up. It's almost like crunch up. And when it's cool, it is, you can feel it, it's like a plastic crust on whatever fibre you're doing. So the, the polyester within the fibres will go, would revert back to plastic and you'll find that there will be a hard plastic crust on the edge of your, of, your, of your piece of fabric. And that's how you tell that you've got polyester in your fabric, in your fibre content. Yeah. That is the lesson for today. Wow. There will be an exam later <laughs> on. <laughs> and the exam conditions. <laughs> wow. Okay. That was let me just see if there are any more comments there. That was fantastic. That was so good. I'm I'm gonna have to get a biscuit now. I'm gonna have to get yeah. a biscuit. I'm exhausted. Right, Dan, you're gonna have to recharge after that because that was quite full on. That was just a really that was like a whistle stop tour of some fiber content and how you tell and all the things that it can do. I mean, obviously. Out there, we've got, there's 101 fibres and fabrics and things that we can get involved in. But if we have a little bit of knowledge, it will inform other things as well. So um, hopefully, if not you, uh, hopefully all those viewers that come in and watch this, if not now, maybe later or refer to back to it later, because it's something you can just like, oh, watch that again, because then it might, you know, it are going. So I've just given out loads of stuff. There. And so um, hopefully it's going to be helpful to everyone out there in our sort of like creative textile and arts and crafts community so yeah i think so i think that was absolutely brilliant i really do gary um i learned so much in that and uh, it's really important you know to know what you're buying and know what you want to use and what you need for your projects and there's loads of information in there 
So thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. And thank you to our lovely viewers who have been watching us and making comments. Uh, Lisa has said she absolutely loves it. She's loved it. So thank you oh, very, very much you. indeed. That's been brilliant. Ah. Well, if you are watching as lovely YouTuber uh, live um, or whether you are going to be coming in at a later date, there's a plane going over. That's my plane because I've lost a million quid. You see, I told you my jet was waiting. I told you my jet was waiting and he's gone now because I've lost that million quid. I'm not going to the Maldives now. I'm going to carry on working. I know. Um, but lovely YouTuber, if you are watching us, please hit the subscribe and the like button as well. The likes really help us to uh, apparently um, YouTube, you know, they like videos that are liked and then they push them out there a bit more. So if you like the button, it will help us and other people. If you subscribe to our channel as well, and if you hit the little bell, you'll be notified when we're going live. We will be going live next week, but Gary, we're going live on Saturday next yes. week. Aren't we? We're going to um, do a Saturday for a change. Um, yes. Shall I tell you what I've got in mind, what I'd like to do? Yes. What are we going to be doing in next week's episode? So, okay. So um, I think we're all starting to think about holidays. So holiday sort of seasons on the horizon for many of us, especially in the sort of the Western Hemisphere. And you might be just having a holiday down the road. You might be having a staycation or you might be lucky enough to do a bit of traveling. But what I want to talk about is what do I take on holiday when I, you know, to get creative. What is the creative little toolbox and bits and pieces I take with me so I can continue to be creative when I'm away on holiday? So I'll be showing you that. Um, but I there's some little, like, little arty, crafty exercises that we can do to get you started. And so for you, Rachel, Ooh, I, yes, yes okay. so for you. So you're going to do, an, like, a little creative art session, really simple really almost like a little doodle thing something you can do perhaps when you're on holiday if you've got maybe it's a rainy day or you're stuck you know waiting for connections from planes to trains to automobiles that you think oh i'll just do this while i'm waiting what you'll need is um and if anyone wants to join us you just need a, like a sheet of paper you can get a, a, a sheet of a4 paper out of the printer so just a sheet of paper um, a biro or some sort of like black marker pen um, you can have a ruler or something uh, something straight you can draw a line next to, so just to draw a straight line. And just a little, either a little pot of paint, so a little palette of children's paint, so it could be, you know, just a tiny little palette of paint, a little pot of water. You don't need a brush. So you won't need a brush because all you need is your finger. All right? So you're just going to use your finger. So yeah. um, really, really simple. If, I mean, in fact, if you haven't got any paint or anything like that you could use some makeup from your makeup bag <laughs> so you could rub your wet your finger you could rub it on your eyeshadow your lipstick or anything like that as long as you can make a mark with your finger with a piece of with some color that's all i'm going to get you to do next week well, so that's if what you I'm going to do because i've got some it, i've got loads of little round pots of creamy blusher so i am okay. going to use those on okay my that's good video. that's a really good idea so that means it's yeah. accessible to everyone no matter where you are you're stuck somewhere yeah you've got a bit of time to waste Lip you could use lipsticks yes okay brilliant oh i'm excited about that so that's <laughs> going to be next saturday we don't know the time yet but um obviously if you're watching this after the event you'll have you can just click onto the next video and it'll be there. Um, but if you are watching live or you're watching before Saturday, the what what date is that going to be? 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, I believe. Saturday the 16th, the 16th. Is right around there. Um, then uh, have a look on our Instagram feeds this week, um, maybe in our newsletter as well, which you can sign up to on our website, craftymonkeys.com. Um, and uh, we will be telling you when, what time we're going live, because I don't know yet. Maybe we'll go live in the afternoon because then we can get our lovely American audience in yes. live as well, Gary. That would be good, wouldn't it? That'd this is nice. early for our Americans, but maybe Saturday afternoon. Yeah. So um, hopefully we will see you, lovely YouTuber subscriber, then. Uh, with lots more arts and crafts and lots more to come up in the weeks following. Let your friends know and let's get the community going. Let's get chatting. I love it. I love it. I've loved this morning, Gary. I've loved it. I've loved good. it. So now I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to end the stream on YouTube. Um, and um, thank you everybody for watching. As I say, like, hit subscribe, hit notify and come and join us on the next class, which will be next Saturday. But thank you so much, lovely Gary Mills. What a talent yeah. he is. Okay. See you later. Bye.